What is up responsible day traders? Today is Sunday, January 22nd, 2023. I am Lindsay Duff and this is Responsible Day Trading. Okay, so last week we thought that it was going, well, I thought that it might have the strength to continue pushing up. What I did see was that area of resistance continuing to hold. So it's holding, it's pushed it back down. We haven't quite seen what we need for it to really show us continuation down. And we'll talk about the scenario and how it kind of aligns with what's been happening in the past. And we may still see this go up, but you know, we prepare for everything. And as I've said before, I'm not trading the daily chart because if I was, I would have to have way, way bigger risk. And I'm really not willing to do that. So I'm looking for more little bits of points here and there instead of what the bigger picture is telling us. But knowing what the bigger, knowing what the bigger picture has to say really helps us in determining those bigger moves in how long we can hold, uh, bigger areas we expect to get to, even if we're looking for it to pull back and we want to get out and we're looking for it to push again, just knowing where we can see these bigger areas. So we're going to go ahead and first check out the news. Then we're going to check out what the market has for us. So let's just uh, go ahead and get into it. <laughs> All right, guys, so let's go ahead. We like to go over here to responsible day trading. When we get over here, we're going to go over to news and we'll go to market news. Now, under the market news, we can see here nothing for Monday or Tuesday. Wednesday, we do have crude oil inventories at 930. Thursday, we've got some pre-market, so an hour before the market opens and then half an hour after the market opens, new home sales. Friday, a little pre-market, so an hour before and half an hour after. So I am i can't stress it enough, and I say this every time, you know, not necessarily needing to get out every time there's news, you know, uh, maybe just paying attention, especially to things like FOMC, but knowing that news can spike hard and having your stop set in place is really the best idea. And just being aware and being around for that. You know, I like to just kind of wait sometimes for these things to move through. Otherwise, I just hold my position. All right, so let's go ahead and check out this daily chart here. Now, what we were looking at previously was how the market had pulled up to this area and price bars were still pushing up. MACDs were at that time still strong outside of the Bollinger Bands. Now, one of the things that we have in favor of this continuing up is where what I like to call on the right side of the Bollinger Bands, which means we're above the Bollinger Bands or we had been above the Bollinger Bands here with strength. For me to really anticipate this pushing down, we're going to need to get back below the Bollinger Bands like we did here. And right now they're still blue and pushing up. So I'm not sure that we're going to see that happen. We have a lot, a lot of space to run to get back below. So even this big push down that happened really told us that not necessarily was it going to go down right at that time. Now we can see, and I wanted to look back at some areas like right back in here or even back in here, back in here. And even what is even happened here is the fact that we got around this area and what happened was we got that big drop down. We got a really decent pull back like we saw here and here and here got a really decent pull back and then it just continued with the direction to the downside. So are we going to see that happen now? I, you know, I not a fortune teller. I can't, I can't tell you that ahead of time. Right now we do have blue BBs. It hasn't immediately gone back up above the Bollinger Bands. Sometimes these things do take some time to get back up and push back up above there. So, you know, we may see something along the lines of what happened here where it rolls inside and then pushes up. So right now we have that big close at the top of the, the bar from Friday. We have this bar starting to open, which typically will come back down a little bit before it goes up. We may even see something like this where it pushed up and then just continues down from there. But we're not below the zero line yet. Um, we had a really, really decent push up. Maybe we'll see some sort of M pivot that will push this back to the downside. But I know looking at the 233 doesn't give a whole lot of hope of right now with continuation to the upside, but that's our most immediate chart. So we're not gonna let that run everything. 
Um, but what we did see here, and let's go over to the 28657 so we can get a little bit bigger picture and why we do at the very least expect this to pull back. So looking at the 28,657, something pretty significant that I see here is that we don't have any kind of divergence to the upside yet, um, or we don't have any divergence to the downside to, to push this back down to the downside. And what do I mean by like by that? Even right in here, you can see how what happened with the price here is the price continues to push down but the MACDs struggle to continue down and they stayed to the upside, which gave us the indications that this was gonna pull back. When this came down here, we couldn't even exceed that bottom Bollinger Band, which told us even though these EMAs were strong to the downside, that we anticipated more to the upside. We had a little bit of a pullback here, bam, pulled down and continued up. Now what we know about the price and the emas is that we're always anticipating the price to pull back to the emas and what we call that here at responsible day trading is a snapback so we definitely anticipate this price to at least come back down you know at least right back into this area but more than anything maybe right back down to the area of the emas now, this is still going to pull up a little bit more, even with this being high, but we at the very, very least expect it to pull down and maybe pull back up towards this area if it's going to come back down, or we may see this exceed and continue up. Now, does that mean that it can't just crash through and continue down? Obviously it can, but we're looking at patterns here and we're understanding things that have happened previously and what we anticipate to happen now. You know, last week I was talking about the anticipations for this to continue up and I really, really expected some more continuation to the upside. We got a little bit of continuation to the upside, but look what happened in the MACDs. We never made a new high in the MACDs, which told us to at the very least have caution every time it was pushing up. We got back above the Bollinger Bands here, but with a lot of weakness. Now, with these MACDs that are happening here, we're way above the zero line. So even a pullback could tell us some more information to the upside, just like looking here, okay? We saw that we're way above the zero line. We have white BBs. It pulled down to the bottom Bollinger Band, could barely, barely even exceed it. I mean, it did just by a hair. And we saw continuation to the upside, okay? And we got really, really far away and what happened? boom, we pulled back into the areas of the EMAs. So this is more along the lines of what I'm expecting to happen here. Now, if you're a divergence connoisseur like myself, this technically isn't divergence, okay? Because both the price and the MACDs led higher. But look how much this price pushed up and what little pushes up we got in the MACDs. We barely exceeded that high. So it was a great indication that with all this distance there is back to the EMAs that we were gonna see it pull back into the area, at least into the area of the EMAs. At the very least, I would expect it to come back here, which I had us right in this small EMA, but the MACDs kept the strength up and pulled us all the way back here. So, I mean, I love divergence to me. It tells me so, so, so much. And I don't even have any divergence happening in the MACDs yet. So yes, I'm going to anticipate it to give some sort of pullback. And maybe this is all the pullback we see before it pushes up. We don't know. Um, we have to see what the other charts are doing. But because this is run off of more percentages and we have numbers here that can continue going up and those numbers can't continue going up, we'll see while the price is going up, the MACD is pulling back to give us some more space to run to the upside and create things like divergences when the price is going up and the MACDs are going down to tell us when we see things like reversal bars and signs on other charts that we expect it to pull back. So right now, <laughs> I want to say my anticipations are still to the upside. Okay. Getting back above these EMAs is something big for me, even though we had such a, such a big move down. Now we are lower 
than this last main pivot area that happened here. So it may be my wishful thinking because we know that I have a positive outlook and a lot of that is anticipating the market to continue to the upside. So that may happen here, but it may not. Okay, so now that we come over to our three main trading charts, I wanna talk a little bit about what we saw happening here. Now, we have something a little different going on right in this area than we did back in this area. And this told us that we were going to see this push down. Like I said, we could see reasons for this to at least pull back. And here's why. Now, as this pulled down at this point, you can see the MACDs didn't cross that bottom Bollinger Band, which told us that we have anticipations for it to continue up. And that was as we were reaching these areas of the EMAs here and the zero line saying that, yes, we're going to see continuation to the upside. Now, when this pushed up again, we had MACDs leading lower than the previous time right here. We also never crossed the top Bollinger Band. And that's pretty significant. You can see it happening here too. It pushes up, never crosses the top Bollinger Band, gives a deeper pullback before it goes up. This is more or less what I'm anticipating to happen right now. I'm anticipating this to give just a bit of a deeper pullback and then roll back to the upside. Will it happen? I don't know. We're gonna have to wait and watch and see, right? So what we saw here, was as this was starting to roll to the upside, the BBs on the 10,946 were still rolling to the outside. So that gave us the indications that, oh, even though it's pulling back into these areas that would typically tell us more up, we want to be cautious because we're struggling to see the 10,946 show that movement to the upside. So we saw this distance to the EMAs. We saw the reasons for it to snap back. If you took the long right up in here, and this was very close to the end of the day, so I know, I know there weren't very many people taking the long up in there. And then when it pushed up here and didn't even cross that top Bollinger Band, distance to the EMAs snap back right into it. Now, as the day before the day opened, this was the look that we had. Now the day's just opening. We know it happens when it opens. We tend to see a pullback that we would not normally see in our normal time of the market, unless of course there's some crazy news, but we tend to see it pull back a little bit deeper than it would normally do if the market was just running. And so what we saw here was the breakaway and the pullback. And we can see right now the BB does look strong to the downside. So I would be um, cautious about taking any longs, especially because remember, we have a ton of distance to run back to the next major area on the 28,657. Um, can we see it just pull back a little bit and go up from here? Absolutely. We absolutely can, but we wanna just make sure that we are not trying to push it up ourselves and that we're paying attention to slowdowns and that we're seeing reasons for it to continue up. What I mean by paying attention to slowdowns is something like seeing the BBs slow and start to roll. Right now, they are still showing some strength to the downside, so we wouldn't wanna go against that. We're just starting to see the potential for this to push up. We saw it happen right back in here and look at the MACDs not crossing that top Bollinger Band. So what happened? Pushed back to the downside. So I'd want to see these BBs cross back up, pull back in, show us reasons to continue up. We need to see a slow down here to see the push up. But right now, looking at that MACD on the 10,946, which this is the first price bar happening on the 10,946. And so, you know, I don't want to base all of my opinions on it pulling back by seeing what's happening here. But let's be real. We had a very, very strong push to the upside. We're still way above the zero line here. Uh, direction is still up on the 1597 currently because we have not gotten back below the EMAs and pulled away from them yet. We still are higher than this last previous pivot. So could it push up from here? Sure, but we want to see it slow down. We'd really want to see it start to say, hey, this BB is going to give us some sort of indication, kind of like this one. And obviously, we probably wouldn't catch this first bar. We'd have to wait for some pullbacks into the area 
to participate in these moves. Now, can we just jump on these moves whenever we see them happening going, oh, there's a long bar in the 10,946. We're way above the zero line. We're expecting this to go up as the EMAs are crossing over. All those expectations are absolutely correct. The thing is, if we want to keep a low risk, we have to wait for the right opportunities. We don't want to just jump in anywhere because what could happen is we decide to get in late and then it pulls back, stops us out, and then continues on in the direction that we anticipated. So waiting for the right opportunities is something that really, really is going to help you feel more comfortable. It's going to keep your risk in a good place and you're going to feel pretty happy with your decisions. Now you can see here, as I was talking about those BBs making that separation between the previous one, and we were talking about how this BB was struggling to go back above. Now, let's just even say the scenario that it goes back up from right here, but you decided to get in long here, you get stopped out and then it continues up and you're kind of mad at yourself because you didn't wait for the right signals and because you're trying to take along going against what right now currently has strength to the downside. So the immediate strength right now on the 1597, just looking at the MACDs is down, but the overall strength is to the upside with those EMAs wide and spread apart with being way above the zero line here with uh, even the 28657, the direction is so far up. We're way above the zero line. We're way above the EMAs. So the direction has shifted to the upside. Now, what's going to make this even more, you know, just fantastic as a shift to the upside, honestly, is to see it pull back a little bit more and then push past this area and um, feel that we've got that strength and momentum and see these BBs roll up and see the strength and momentum to go up and exceed this previous high. Now we got some ways, ways, ways to go before we really get back above like the last big highs. But if we can get back above here and then eventually back above here, then we're going to see some really nice movement to the upside. But for now, what we are seeing is a potential for an M pivot to the downside as this is leading lower, push back up a little bit higher here. We have got to get back above here. We've got to get back above this area. We've got to pull back into it and then we've got to see pushes up if we really, really want to anticipate this moving back into the direction of the upside. But, um, but for now, the overall is up. The immediate is pulling back to the downside. So uh, immediate's pushing down, overall is up. Let's see if it stays like that, right? All right, well, I guess that's going to wrap it up for this um, Sunday night's video. Um, there's just, there's so many opportunities throughout the day that you really do have to be selective. And you have to think to yourself, am I doing the right thing or am I trying to make the market do what I want it to do? Whenever you're trying to push it in that direction, it's never gonna work. You know, just letting things flow and act naturally, but also being prepared to act whenever the time is right. So that's a big part of it. You know, I do have discussions with traders who say, I see it, I see it, I see it. And then I don't take it. And then I take what comes later. And a lot of that is just, you know, fear of doing the right thing. I want to say, you know, just fear of being wrong more than anything, honestly. It's fear of being wrong because they see it, they know it, and then they're too late for it after that. So we're really working on honing in being, uh, getting in at that right time and trusting yourself because you know, not every trade's going to work out and that's okay. And you don't have to let it mean anything about you. All you have to do is let yourself learn from it. You see it happen. You don't take it. So you wait and you take the next one, but you have to wait for the right one next wait for the right pullback. Don't just take that mediocre one that may have worked and you know, that you just kind of get lucky with, I like to call that, don't uh, click it and say a prayer, right? Just make sure that you're paying attention, give it time, breathe through it all. You know, I mean, <laughs> I have read this book, The Power of Vulnerability, so many times right now. And it really, I think it really is part of being a trader too, because you have to be vulnerable to take these trades. You have to say, you know what? 
I may be a little bit scared, but I know I'm doing the right thing. And the more that you do the right thing, even if you're a little bit scared, the easier it becomes and the less fear that comes into it. Okay. So, all right, guys. Well, I hope that everybody has a wonderful week. This time next week, I will be in Tahiti. Uh, so I will ask Jason to do our next um, Sunday night rundown. Uh, but if you've got questions, please reach out to us. We are happy to help. Uh, we're also talking about putting together a live seminar in April. For those who can't join, we may do a streaming seminar. For those who can, face to face. I can't wait to give you all hugs. And guys, if you're interested, hit us up. Let me know because I would love to see you there. I'd love to uh, sit down, have a meal with you and just, you know, chat about your trading. So let me know. Hit me up. And uh, guys, I hope everybody has a wonderful week. And as always, you know that I look forward to catching you on the profitable side. Thank you.